Hello AP Calc BC students, Mr. Record here, and we're going to take a look at our second video in the pair that asks us to use the idea of integration in order to find a power series. In the previous problem, we had a situation where our example could have probably been done as quickly without doing that process, but I think that that's going to change in our part B here. So as you can see, it asks to find the power series centered at zero for the function arctangent of x. And of course, as always, we're going to state the interval of convergence. Now, think about your alternative right now. If you didn't know this power series, if you didn't have it memorized, and it's not a tough one to memorize, but if you didn't, let's say, you would have to take a lot of derivatives of this guy. And that's going to get really ugly really fast because the first derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And then from there, the, the floodgates open up for lots of chain rules and product rules, and nobody's going to like to do that. But if you thought just a moment about what that first derivative was, the 1 over 1 plus x squared, I believe that we could use that and his integral that would take it right back to arctang of x to write that power series. Now, why is 1 over 1 plus x squared such an important series? I mean, is that an easy series to write? And the answer is, yes, it is. Because this series has the proverbial infinite geometric look to it that we've been using for, uh, for quite a few of our examples up until this point. And so if we doctored this up just a little bit by throwing our negative in the middle there and then changing the sign of the x squared. Make sure that that squared is, is placed inside the parentheses there so it doesn't completely wipe that out. Then we have our infinite geometric series where the first term is a and the common r is negative x squared. So we would just simply take that a and we would multiply it by negative x squared and that would be the second term. And then we would have our next term and that term would look a little something like, well, be nice if we get the right color. And that term would look something like adding negative x squared and the term after that, well, if you take a negative x squared uh, and you multiply it by itself, then you have a negative x squared squared. And then if we go to the next case, we would have a negative x squared times itself times itself again. And that would be a negative x squared to the third before we simplify. And boom, that would start our series out. So what is the interval of convergence for this particular series? Because remember, we could use it to find the interval of convergence for our final answer. Well, remember that in an infinite geometric series, your interval of convergence is just the absolute value of your r, much be less than 1. We know that that negative sign will disappear when it factors out in front. And if you find yourself solving a quadratic absolute value, normally those can be a little hairy. But in this case, if you just use some common sense, it's very likely that you're going to come to the realization that any number between negative 1 and 1 is going to be a part of that particular interval. You're essentially taking the square root of both sides and, and writing your compound inequality. So that's what we have for our interval convergence. Now let's move on to the series that we want because we don't want the 1 over 1 plus x squared series, but rather we want the antiderivative of that particular series. And that is just manifested by taking the antiderivative of what we have up here, and I will go ahead and simplify. So we have 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus x to the sixth, known as the alternating pattern there, all with respect to x. And that's going to give us x minus 1 third x cubed plus 1 fifth x to the fifth minus 1 seventh x to the seventh. And I'm sure that this will go on and on and on till it has a look, a general term that would be negative 1 
to the, well, let's think about this here. Well, we could go with a lot of different things here. It really doesn't matter. But I tell you, in this particular case, I'm going to choose to use an n. Now, if you're thinking n minus 1 or n plus 1 because you start out positive, don't worry about that. It could still be written in that regard. But I'm going to go ahead and elect to start my series at n equals 0. We don't often get a chance to do that. In the previous problem, we couldn't because we had an n term in our denominator. But I think we're going to avoid that here as I continue to move through this problem and say that we have our x value that's simply raised to an odd number. And the universal way to say an odd number is 2n plus 1. When your n starts at 0, you're going to get your 1, 3, 5, 7. And notice how the denominator is just that 2n plus 1 uh, without any factorial or anything of that nature. So I can just write it like that. And that's a very powerful thing to have uh, conjured up because that is what's going to end up uh, being your expression after your summation. And so therefore, we can say that the arctan, the arctangent of x, is indeed equivalent to the series that I just wrote up above. And I know it seems kind of silly that I'm writing it again, but I want all of this to be really nice and orderly and, and organized as such. And if I keep this going forever and ever and ever, right, all the way through and including its nth term expression as such, I could then say, oh, well, this is also just equivalent to the series, the summation form of the series, where I can let n start with 0. And I would just simply use the information from our nth term expression. Now, I do want to spend just one quick second here talking about the interval of convergence. In this particular case, I can borrow the interval of convergence information from up above because I know that the integration of a function or the derivative of a function, the, the derivative of a power series, the integral of a power series represented uh, some function, is going to have the same interval of convergence. The only behavioral change would be only at the endpoints. And so if I were to check endpoints just very quickly here, checking the left endpoint of negative 1, what I will find in my series down below is that I would have negative 1 raised to the n times. And if I have you think about this for a second, negative 1 replacing the x always raised to some odd power, no matter what, is going to produce a negative 1. There's no denying that fact. And so basically what we have here is an alternating series that behaves very similarly to the harmonic series. Now, you probably would have to use the alternating series test or some kind of a comparison test to really be formal about this. But hopefully you've kind of felt some confidence through the first part of Unit 10 that you could see that this is behaving as an alternating harmonic. And therefore, it's going to converge. All right. If we were to check, let's say, positive 1 on the other side, what we have is, well, a very similar situation. Negative 1 to the nth power now multiplied by 1 over 2n plus 1. The only difference is that my signs alternate in a different pattern. Right? I'm probably looking at going uh, positive, negative, positive here where here it started negative and went positive negative afterwards. So in any event, we still have an alternating harmonic, and thus we are still going to witness convergent behavior. And what that means is that our interval of convergence is actually going to run from negative 1 to 1 and include those values as well. And so here we have the integration approach to developing the arctangent. Now, would we have to do that down the road on the AP exam? 
if in the event that you happen to see this. And I'm going to say that's probably not the case because as you can see here, and I if I can, I'll try to drag it out of the way uh, so that you can see it. Um, we have exactly uh, what we uh, had term by term, albeit with my typo, <laughs> and I do want to fix that. This is an X, and that's something that I wanted to fix before uh, anyone had watched the video, but that is actually an X, and the actual uh, expression does indeed match here, and the interval of convergence is going to match there as well. And so I always thought that arctangent was a fairly easy one to memorize because it looks a little bit like our good friend the sine, except it's lacking the factorial values that you would normally see there in the denominator. So anyhow, that is how you would use integration to come up with your arctangent. Hopefully this helps. We'll see you at the next video.